time to go on the record. A man you can bait with a tweet is not a man we can trust with nuclear weapons. A DNC message that Hillary Clinton will deliver on the road over and over again. Question is, will she connect? Russia, if you're listening, I hope you're able to find the 30,000 emails. Some say it sounded like treason. Donald Trump says it was sarcasm. So will this be the Trump shocker that haunts him until November? Massachusetts Paul's going high profile at the DNC. Who benefits the most? And in a week of smart women Democrats, we have former Attorney General Martha Coakley as our guest today. From WCPB Boston, the inside word from Washington to Beacon Hill. Today's newsmakers are going on the record. Good morning, everybody. I'm Maria Stefano, so along with New Center 5's political great Janet Wu right here. Uh, OTR Ed Harding is on assignment. Quite a stretch for political junkies. The DNC, the RNC, and today we have former Massachusetts Attorney General Martha Coakley to talk about all politics with us. Since leaving public service, Martha Coakley has joined the Boston law firm of Foley Hoag. Good morning, Martha Coakley. Good morning. Thanks Thank for you being for here. being with us. Uh, my pleasure. It was quite the week, wasn't it? It was a very exciting week, uh, particularly last night, but there were so many great moments during this past week seeing the nomination of the first woman. Um, seeing her acceptance speech last night and everything else in between. I I'm really excited about what happened and we've got 104 days until the general election. This is really the perfect question for you. You've had the spotlight on you on some pretty tough races. Last night, Hillary Clinton, um, well, you know how hard it is to change voters' minds once, they you once you've been branded. Last week, Hillary Clinton had four days to answer the question, can she be trusted? Do you think she made a dent in that challenge? I, I absolutely do. I think if you look at the convention, and I was trying to look at it, both what viewers at home were seeing and what might have been happening in the hall, but the stories from family, from people who knew her, from people who worked with her when she did the Children's Defense League, from the mothers who sat with her when their children had been murdered, I think the picture that they presented of Hillary Clinton was a complete one and a different one from what most people think. But does think. that resonate with the people who were Bernie supporters? Does that resonate with people who are on the fence about Donald Trump? Well, it will resonate with Bernie supporters because they are not going to vote for Donald Trump, no matter what he says or what they may say. But will they stay home? Uh, I don't think so. I think they will get energized around the idea that was so obvious at this convention, the positive message about working together, which is what part of their message is, it's contrasted with the Trump mm -hmm. message, which is it's about me, I can fix everything. And that contrast was made very well throughout that convention, the positive message that Democrats have working together against what Trump and the Republicans seem to offer in Cleveland. Let's talk about breaking uh, glass ceilings in the political world, because you did it right here in Massachusetts as the state's first attorney general. And I'm sure for you, and let's all watch this together, this is an image that you won't forget. So when you saw that Just moment, as a Democrat, a lifelong Democrat, did you think about yourself and some of the pressures and the challenges that you had to face as being a first woman in, in what it is that you did. Well, absolutely. And I, I realize running for first Middlesex district attorney, first woman to do that, attorney general, and then being unsuccessful in races. Uh, I've felt the glory and the, uh, the agony of defeat. Um, but what I appreciate about Hillary uh, particularly is that she always got back up and was steadfast in serving the public. And I think that message came through. But for me and for women who have run and lost for our daughters, for our nieces, uh, for our mothers who are still looking for this. This is a big week and she is not only the first woman, she's the most qualified, as Barack Obama said, to run the country. That's what's really exciting. And there are a lot of advantages to being the first woman to do X, Y, Z, but sometimes do you resent the fact that they keep bringing it up all the time, especially when you were running for the first time for certain offices. Yes, and it's always been the case. First woman to go through Williams College and to be asked by a math professor, well, what do women think about this math problem? <laughs> you know, but you get used to it and you cut that back and you say the mission is more important. But it's a double-edged sword though, isn't it? it? Is, because it we be. want to be recognized for being uh, women who are successful, but then I mean, what you just said, it, it goes both ways. It does, and that's why it's so important that we develop 
uh, a critical mass of women. Uh, uh, thinking about Hillary and how she might be held to a different standard on a speech. Look at Elizabeth Warren has a different speaking style than Jennifer Granholm. Uh, but we don't have that many women models. We know men who are good and men who are less good. But we don't say they can't be president, they can't be senator. But this is what's happening as more women become elected, get into the public sector, get into, uh, this will change. And that's what's exciting about this. Let's, Someone has to be first. Let's switch this uh, conversation a bit. Um, as a former prosecutor, if you, if you found someone in high political office, put sensitive emails on a private server, and then deleted thousands of them before turning them over, what would you have done? I would always, always look at what is the intent here. You look at the context, you look at the facts, you look at intent. And that's what gets lost, I think, not in this instance, but in many instances, about people making judgments. It's why we have a process, it's why we have prosecutors, it's why we have grand juries. They should be done according to the law and facts. And, you know, that is what has to happen. We need the rule of law to decide, case by case, whether someone is criminally responsible or not. And, and, and that's what the FBI director did. And if the intent is simply that you are afraid that people would pry into your private life unnecessarily, there's no intent as far as you're, as far as you're concerned? Uh, the, the FBI director, I think, dealt with this very well. You know, being critical, obviously, of what occurred, but saying, my job, if I'm going to bring a crime charge, is to find intent to commit the crime. Um, the Clinton campaign, there, there have been some, t taking some hits that they're just not able to take advantage of what some people call Donald Trump's undisciplined style. That this is just this rogue campaign that nobody can seem to nail down and figure out. It's all new territory here. Well, look, the campaign in some respects is just starting now, right? People who have been paying attention uh, are the political junkies, are the party insiders. Most people probably don't know that much about either candidate except what they hear generally. And so we will see going forward whether the Clinton campaign with a terrific message at a terrific convention and organized. far more disciplined than a lot of the Republicans that ran against Donald Trump, totally, would you say? Totally far more disciplined. And, and, and now they will be put to that test to see if they can do that. Put to the test? You ready to be put to your test? Oh, no. Pop quiz time. <laughs> you know, I'm going to hide this like this. It is, it is summertime. School is out. My goal is to flunk the quiz. No, you're not flunking. You should, <laughs> no, you're not going to flunk this. I, I believe in you. What group first coined the metaphor glass ceiling? Um, it's probably now the National Organization of Women. Or we'll Emily's, give it to her. Emily's Janet, list. my dear friend here for 30 years, <laughs> says she's going to give it to feminists. Ah, uh, first, oh, that, that's yeah, a no, subset of feminists. Right, 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 right. right. First used at the National Press Club, by the way, in 1979 at the Women's Institute for Freedom of the Press. Uh, next question, you ready? Yes. You're not flunking so far. Well, here we go. Sarah Hurwitz, chief speechwriter for Michelle Obama, got high praise for her, her and her boss this past week in Philadelphia. Which Massachusetts town was she raised? And I'm going to give you multiple choices. Okay. What, would, would you rather take a, a no, shot at No, give me the choices. Wayland, Andover, or Longmeadow? Uh, Longmeadow. Mm -hmm. No. You're, you're batting 500. <laughs> so far. <laughs> Wayland. That's it. <laughs> All right. Half She's also a graduate, by the way, of uh, Harvard Law School, like the first That lady. was a fabulous speech, as yeah. we all agree. Yes, for sure. Written, delivered, unbelievable. All right. You, you did okay here. You ready for some more coming back after uh, the break? Absolutely. All right. We're back with Martha Coakley. We'll be back.